Hello, welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. With more and more states opting to legalize the sale of medical marijuana, researchers are taking a closer look at the use of cannabis to treat chronic illnesses. Joining me now for an update is the medicine hunter, Chris Killam. From the medical marijuana perspective, as so far as the treatment of chronic illnesses, as I said in the introduction, what is it about cannabis that makes it that special? Well, it seems that there are primarily two things. There's the THC, that's what people associated with getting high. And that appears to have a salutary effect on the eyes in case of glaucoma. Uh, for people who are suffering from chemotherapy and can't eat, it helps to get their appetite back. And we also know that it is a potent pain reliever and science on that goes back to the 1890s. But there's another agent in cannabis that is getting a lot more attention now and that is called can cannabinodiol. And this is something that you can swallow it by the bucket full, it won't get you high at all. But it appears to have profound nerve protective and brain enhancing properties. And interestingly enough, it also uh, induces uh, anti-anxiety effects. In fact, there was even one piece of literature I read recently suggesting that what psychotic reactions have been reported among people who have used cannabis and then wigged out may be due to uh, cannabis that contains no cannabinodiol at all. So this appears to be a very important, important agent, perhaps useful in the treatment of neurodegenerative disorders. A lot of researchers are, they, are working are, on this Are they right extracting now. that particular chemical off the... Um, um, there, there seem to be two pathways that people are taking. You've got uh, like GW Pharmaceuticals in Britain that has come out with a whole cannabis fluid spray. Uh, you've got people also isolating cannabinodiol and playing with that in the lab. Um, I don't know how this is all going to settle out. I mean, as a whole plant person, I'm inclined toward the whole extract. Uh, but it it does appear that this may also have anti-cancer properties, and that's very intriguing. So, so the cliche that I grew up with uh, watching the news where you had to fry eggs and this is your brain on drugs, it doesn't apply to marijuana. Look, you can get stone stupid if all you do is sit around and, and smoke all day. And I don't advocate that. Uh, the worst killer drugs we have in the United States are alcohol and tobacco. Is it addictive? Is it addictive? I would say that people can absolutely become dependent upon it, uh, but not physiologically addictive. And as you know, that's not just parsing terms. I mean, physiological addiction, you go through very grave withdrawal. Uh, but people can become dependent on it, just as they can on any substance. Now tell me about this study in the American Journal of Pediatrics talking about pregnant women, Jamaican use of pot. Okay. What is that? This is a weird one. <laughs> this is sure to get. I, I missed this one in rounds this morning. <laughs> Melanie Dreyer, who is the Dean of Nursing at Rush Medical Center in Chicago, did a study in Jamaica. It was actually published in the American Journal of Pediatrics in 1994, but now it's recirculating because of all the interest in the neuroprotective. No, no wonder I missed it. Right, okay. right, right. Uh, basically, she studied women during their entire pregnancy and then studied the babies about a year after birth. Uh, she studied a group of women who did smoke cannabis during pregnancy and those who didn't. She expected to see a difference in the babies with uh, birth weight and some and neuro tests. No difference whatsoever. The differences that the researchers did notice that are unexplained and kind of curious is that the babies of the women who had smoked cannabis, we're talking about daily use during their pregnancy, um, socialized more quickly, made eye contact more quickly, and were easier to engage. We don't know why this is so. But all of the old saws about smoking during pregnancy will result in low birth weight or other 
problems did not show up, at least with the Jamaican study. In U.S. studies where we've seen a similar investigation, women have concurrently often been abusing alcohol and other drugs as well. That's cute. Right. I'm going to pull that study out and I'm going to look at the data. Because I don't know if I'm, no, I'm going to recommend that. I'm going to email it to you. My pregnant people. I'm not saying you should. <laughs> and if you have any health topics you want to talk to me about, including the use of pot, email me here at fox at drmaniatfoxnews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mann.